Hello and welcome to this trip to Wales. Uh, this vlog from my trip to Wales. Uh, if you've not seen previous vlogs um, or videos on the channel, basically I'm going to be going to Wales for a week and I'm going to be doing a vlog from the trip because there's some interesting stuff that we're going to be doing on the trip that's theme park related. Uh, most notably, we're going to be going to Oakwood Theme Park in Pembrokeshire. Now, this is a park that I've seen quite a few vlogs from and I've wanted to do for a very long time. It's a small family amusement park in the countryside, which makes it actually quite unique and it actually has quite a unique feel to it. And I think that's mainly due to the fact it is in the countryside and not near a seaside, which the rest of the, um, or most of the other amusement parks um, in the UK are. Uh, it's currently Friday, uh, so the day before I'm setting off the trip, um, as I'm recording this. Uh, I've still got to get ready yet, but I just thought I'd do a bit of an introduction first. Uh, just a few points I'd like to bring up, as is the case, uh, before we get into kind of most vlogs, really. Um, I don't have... I'm not completely sure what we're going to be doing on this trip, to be honest. We're not really... well, we have planned it, but not... I'm not 100% sure what we're going to be doing, but what I do know is we're going to be staying in a town uh, near the sea, so Oakwood's basically a bit further inland, so we'll be about an hour away from Oakwood, so, uh, we're still staying in South Wales, but yeah, it's nice to stay near the sea as I, well I mean I've got Blackpool about 30 minutes away, uh, Southport about 30 minutes away, but you know, the sea's not something we get to see kind of every day so it is always nice uh, to be at the seaside. Uh, other attractions then, speaking of things we might be doing, uh, I'd like to go to Folly Farm, um, that's close to Oakwood and the reason I want to go there, uh, yeah you're probably wondering why, is because uh, I've also seen some vlogs from there and it, they have quite a few kind of heritage like old rides uh, so I'd like to go and give them a go. Uh, I can't quite remember off the top of my head what they've got, uh, but yeah. Anyway then, back to Oakwood. Um, I'm not sure, I have contacted an enthusiast to check if we are allowed to film on the rides or not, because uh, I'm not 100% sure, because uh, I have seen vlogs where enthusiasts have filmed on the rides, but I don't know whether that's looked like with permission, or I'm not aware of like the level of permission you need. Um, or whether you can just do it, because I have a feeling with Oakwood that you do need some form of permission to film on the rides. With the Merlin Parks and uh, Pleasure Beach it's kind of a bit of a no-no and you do have to have kind of very special permission to kind of do that and a very, yeah, YouTube's kind of like not a good enough reason, but uh, with Oakwood, if you do need permission, I don't think it's as hard to get it. Uh, so I'm going to look into that. I know I'm starting to waffle on a bit now, uh, but finally I'd just like to talk a bit more about Oakwood. Uh, the main reason I want to go there is to do the UK's tallest wooden roller coaster known as Megaphobia, because uh, that thing looks incredible. It's often regarded as the best wooden coaster in the UK, although some enthusiasts would argue that Wicker Man is the best in the UK now, uh, since it opened in 2018. Uh, I personally love Wicker Man. Megaphobia is not manufactured by GCI though, it's very, it's more of a classic wooden coaster uh, rather than the GCI woodies which kind of had different style layouts. Also I'm going to be doing my first Gerslai Eurofighter, that was Speed, I mentioned this before, uh, and that's going to be my first vertical lift though because I've never done the Smiler or something like that, or another Eurofighter, I've never done a vertical lift though. I've heard that speed has its good and bad, bad days and it can be a bit of a headbanger occasionally but I've heard that it's been running quite smoothly lately so yeah, hopefully we, I can get a smooth ride on it. I mean if it's not on the scale of infusion it, and it's not and it's just a couple of headbangs then I should be okay as long as it's not another infusion. Um, yeah. Speaking of Infusion and Blackpool Pleasure Beach actually, I have, as I promised in the last video I did about Blackpool Pleasure Beach, which wasn't a vlog, I have some shout outs to give 
out. Well, you could kind of class it as one shout out, uh, but technically three shout outs. Obviously, in my Blackpool vlog, I gave a shout out to I'm Addicted to Theme Parks, and today I'm going to be giving a shout out to a channel called. I only discovered it last week, but I'm going to give a shout out to a channel called Theme Park Mad. I'm going to put a link to this channel in the description as well, because when I was searching up this channel, it's kind of a difficult channel to find, or I had trouble finding it. Uh, so I will put a link to this one in the description. Uh, make sure you go and subscribe to that channel, and I'll just kind of explain how I find out about this channel. Uh, so basically, if you watched the Blackpool vlog, uh, well you would have seen that from Blackpool Pleasure Beach, uh, July 2019. And then I mentioned in the last video I had quite a bit of positive feedback. Uh, now somebody from Theme Park Mad, us, who stars in the vlogs, um, messaged me, uh, basically giving feedback on the vlog and that it was helpful and stuff, because obviously in that vlog I talked about stuff like the new E-band system, which is... Uh, something that's being trialled at the moment. After this has gone online, the trial will have finished, so we'll probably know whether that's going to continue or whether they're not going to do it, but the way... I mean, I've looked into this a bit, and I've actually had some... We've actually had an email now back from the Pleasure Beach. It sounds like that this is going to continue. Um, and yeah, I won't talk about it in this video, but yeah. I might talk about it in another video, I don't really know. Anyway, so anyway, yeah, and they basically, and this person basically told me about Theme Park Mad, because uh, she stars in the vlog, so shout out to you, Emily. Um, but yeah, uh, so Theme Park Mad, it's run by someone called Josh, so shout out to you as well. And there's also someone called Danielle who's in the vlogs as well, uh, uh, as well, uh, as well, a lot. Um, uh, there's some other people in, in those vlogs as well, but yeah, definitely go and check out Theme Park Mad, it's a good channel, uh, quite a newish channel. Yeah, another reason why I'm putting a link to this one is because there was an old Theme Park Mad channel, but uh, Josh decided to create a new one. Uh, Josh is the guy who kind of, he runs Theme Park Mad basically, I think I already said that, but yeah. Anyway, shout out to you three, shout out to Theme Park Mad, go and subscribe to Theme Park Mad, and yeah. So, we're about ready to get into the vlog now, and I will show you some footage from, I'm not sure where, whenever, um, whenever there's something to show you basically, so yeah. So after a four and a half hour, possibly five hour drive, there was quite a bit of traffic, we're now here our accommodation. I've not got the camera out for this because I'm lazy and we're still unpacking but the plan is we're going to get something to eat then go down to the beach. Uh, but I thought I'd just show you this view because um, it's got quite a good view uh, out the window or uh, well, one of the windows anyway. There's some sand dunes so I'll spin you around for that in a minute. So this isn't going to pick up great on this phone. Uh, it'll pick up better on the camera but as you can see we've got a nice view out here of the sand dunes which eventually stretches out to the sea so I really like this view and this accommodation about an hour from Oakwood so yeah I'm not quite still not quite sure what the plan is yet but as I say we said we're going down there a bit later and yeah we'll just do stuff however we decide to do it really we're here for a week so yeah so just a small update and still on the phone it's the next day we are in Asda getting some stuff and then we're gonna head down to the beach so yeah just a bit of an update I'll probably do some small ones like these throughout the week so yeah that's all I have to say goodbye for now <laughs> So three days down, three days to go pretty much. I know we're technic this this technically going on for eight days, but two of those days they're travelling there and travelling back. So yeah, we've had three days here. You just saw some shots of the last couple of days. Or the last three days. On the first day we went to the beach that I showed you at the start of the vlog. Then the second day we went to a different beach and to another seaside town in South Wales and then today we went to Swansea which was 
not quite as fun but tomorrow is the big day for it it's going to be a wednesday and we're going to oakwood so i'm going to shake the camera with me and i'll show you some shots around the park and my reviews of the rides looking forward to getting on megaphobia and speed as i said before so yeah i'll catch up later with or maybe tomorrow or the day after with another update okay guys so don't forget to smile for the camera on the second floor okay <laughs> please remain seated to the right guys keep your arms and legs inside at all times so don't go around the corner so I'll be far and enjoy your life <laughs> right, come here Here we go. Whoa! First drop.
wasn't even rough. That was smooth. That wasn't even rough. I thought it might be rough, but it was smooth. Really good ride, that.
So we spent the morning doing various different rides and attractions across Oakwood theme parks as you just saw from the footage. It's nearly 2pm which means it's nearly time for Vertigo to open. Now Vertigo is what is known as a sky coaster, except a sky coaster is not a coaster at all, it's basically a huge swing is the best way to describe it as you'll be able to see. Uh, so nothing to do with a roller coaster at all. Uh, there's one of these at Blackpool and this thing is absolutely huge, it's the biggest thing in the park, 160 foot tall. So basically what happens as you just saw, uh, the, there's a br very brave member of staff testing this at the moment. Uh, this is the first time we've seen this in action today. Uh, basically how this works is you put on a harness, uh, you go into like, onto li like a platform as you just saw at the start of this video, you lie down. You then attach to this like winch, you've winched up and as you can see uh, the member of staff's going very high. When you get to the top of there you pull a release cord which basically releases you and then you swing. And as you can see that thing looks absolutely horrific. He's about to pull it any second now I believe. Oh, he's going to pull it. And there you go. That looks absolutely terrifying. That is the first time I've ever seen one of them in person. And oh my word. The only thing that I've ever done similar to this is an Outward Bounds activity known as the Giant Swing. Uh, which is basically like a third, maybe even a quarter of the size of this. And on that you're at like a 45 degree angle. So it's nowhere near as scary. It's also smaller. Uh, they run that at various different Outward Bounds centres. And... Yeah, that thing, I would never do that. It's a pay extra, by the way. I believe it's £30 for three people. Um, so, yeah, it's quite expensive as well. So, my advice would be don't do this, or don't pay for this unless you definitely know you want to do it. I mean, look, he's spinning around as well. Like, I can't believe people want to do this. It's like, yeah. And... Nope, not for me at all.
at Southport's even rougher than that. But that it's not good. <laughs> yeah, I see why she didn't like. Yeah. Yep. So we've done a couple of other rides as you just saw from the footage. We did Spooky 3D, the park's only dark ride. Uh, didn't think that was that good at all really. Uh, I'd say that one improvement that this park could make, and it's a really good park by the way, I'm really impressed with it, is just do up that dark ride. I do apologise for that uh, to all you headphone users because that form was pretty loud in there as you would have heard. I mean, you, I'm sure you all know what I'm referring to because of how loud it was. I'm just getting some shots here of uh, drenched. Um, I'm probably I might not do this today because uh, from seeing people on it and wow it it gets around that corner as well um, yeah I might not do this today because um, from what we're seeing people are getting pretty drenched and that would not just not really just don't really fancy that today to be honest 
Anyway, I've just uh, moved around a bit there to get some more footage. Uh, we also did the Creep Crawler roller coaster, um, which is a Pimfari. Uh, third Pimfari we've done now. I did the Wildcat when it was at Southport Pleasureland. I've done the roller coaster, which is still at Southport Pleasureland and also has the loop. And I've done uh, the Creep Crawler here at Oakwood. Probably the second most rough out of the ones I've done. The roughest, I mean, all of them have been bearable. Uh, they've just not been that good rides. Uh, that one was quite rough. Uh, the Southport one was even more rough. Still not as bad as something like Infusion. Uh, but yeah, I don't know why it has the overs with shoulder restraints either because it doesn't have any inversions. It'd be better with just lap bars. But yeah. Whoa, big splash. Another thing with the giant swing is, is you actually hoist people up on, or you'll have to like belay them up as well, like on ropes, uh, whereas this is automatic. And also something with that is that you can pull the cord at any time, whereas, yeah, because that has a release cord as well, and I don't think you can do that with this, I think you just have to brave it, basically. Uh, but I just thought I'd come back round now because there's some members of the general public actually on this thing now. Uh, whereas before there wasn't, so I just thought I'd show you their reactions. It must yeah. be very uh, nerve-wracking going up there, uh, but yeah. Any second now. Right. <laughs> I don't blame him from screaming like that either. Uh, yeah. Uh, so basically, they tell you when to pull it as you just heard and I mean it's huge I know it does swing out a long way uh, but, uh, which makes it look even bigger it, as, than it actually is but I mean this thing's massive especially when considering that the tallest roller coaster in the UK the big ones only 213 foot right I'm sorry if uh, the fading was um, a bit funny on that transition there and it kind of transitioned a bit weird it's just because I kind of pressed stop on the recorder and I was still talking but uh, yeah we're here now at Megaphobia um, getting some shots some more off ride shots because we've done all the major rides that's kind of why we're doing all these shots at the moment um, yeah really good wooden roller coaster actually my second favourite in the UK after Wicker Man uh, yeah, it's plenty of air time as well I did it at the start of the day as you saw in the footage and that first drop that's a highlight of the element like you practically half stood up on that the air time is just insane uh, good ejection on that first drop uh, yeah it's the air time with this ride I do prefer kind of the overall flow of Wicker Man I don't know what it is I prefer the Millennium Flyer trains to these I just think that these lap bars I'm not a big fan of them uh, but I prefer the ones in the Millennium Flyer trains I don't know it's just me uh, but yeah right here we are at speed and now this is one I have to talk about I mean you would have heard my reaction from the GoPro footage footage and yeah as you can probably tell i was pretty blown away by this thing like it really exceeded my expectations i thought it was going to be rough but it's pretty smooth to be honest um the only thing i would say is i did do it on the second go a little uh, second row sorry a little earlier and there was a bit more of a rattle i'm going to try it again later um back on the front row probably do an outside seat because i've done two inside seats the second row uh, ride I did, I did on an inside seat as well. Only a bit of a rattle though. Uh, still very bearable. Uh, but yeah, just thought I'd make you aware of that. Uh, but yeah, the front, the front row is what really got me. So yeah, didn't ride quite as well the second row, but still I enjoyed it. But the front row, like wow, that was amazing. Uh, but yeah, I'll talk to you a little later.
still getting some shots of speed then you really can get some plenty of amazing off-ride shots from this ride I mean you can see it from plenty of different angles you can pretty much see the whole coast from so many different angles like Megaphobia unfortunately you can't quite see as much of that coaster as I'd want to um, but yeah we're going to do some more rides I think we're going to do some stuff like Snake River Falls now if we're not done that yet but yeah really enjoying the park and I'll probably speak to you when we get back to the accommodation now On, and that means we've only got one more day to go. Um, I thought I'd summarise Oakwood quickly and also talk a bit about today. Well, there's not much to say about today, but I'll sum up what we did. And then tomorrow we're going to be going to Folly Farm, uh, which is, a, I believe it has old amusement rides, but I need to look into that a bit more. Um, but yeah. I'm not sure how much video I'll do there, or if there's any I can do, that's what I'm going to look into after recording this, but I'm just going to do a quick summary of Oakwood. This is just going to be a quick one, and then when I go home, I'm going to talk about the park in a bit more detail. So anyway, let's get into it. So, yeah, brilliant family park, uh, very friendly. Um, I'll talk a bit more about filming rides when I get home actually because otherwise I'm just going to be waffling on for a long time but my favourite rides were uh, Megaphobia and Speed, both brilliant rides. Megaphobia is my second favourite wooden coaster and Speed is was surprisingly smooth. I did do it on an outside seat and it was a bit rougher, there was a bit of some head banging and not a lot, it was still bearable and a bit of a rattle on the train. Um, obviously that rattle was also there on the second row in the middle seat as mentioned before but uh, it was worse on the outside seat on the front row so the, possibly the worst seat to ride speed on would be um, back row on an outside seat because I didn't do it on that seat but I reckon it might be a bit rougher on there uh, so yeah yeah Emily if you're watching I'd happily do Megaphobia or speed 20 times uh, don't ask guys that's just a little joke we have something that happened I'm not going to explain in this video but yeah that's all I have to say about Oakwoods 
uh, for now I'm going to do in-depth reviews of the rides probably in separate videos as I'll probably start doing with some other rides from some other parks as well as the park itself but I will uh, give a review of the park at the end of this video as well and then maybe go in more depth in a separate video I'm thinking of starting a series for the winter season when we're not going to be at parks just doing more in-depth reviews of the park uh, but anyway Oakwood was really good so I'll talk a bit more about that later as I said uh, now let's talk about today so went to this water park in Swansea which you actually have to well it's best if you book there beforehand because if it gets busy they give you like two hour slots but they don't tell you when to go out or anything I think maybe they do if it's mainly more for if it's busy but today it wasn't so it was okay but went on Tuesday and we couldn't get in for like two hours so we didn't bother uh, when we went to Swansea a couple of days ago but uh, we booked just in case for today because uh, we were like, like 1.40 and we couldn't get in till 3.40 because it was that busy that's when they were starting the like next session and I guess kicking people out but we booked today just in case which is what they advise you to do the website wasn't working on Tuesday but uh, we booked it at the place there I believe it's working now but yeah really good water park there's like a master blaster if you've been to like sandcastle you know the master blaster a roller coaster water slide don't know if that's the technical name for it i'm not really a water park enthusiast but yeah um also there was a couple of there was like an open slide and the tunnel slides which were both all right as well the master blaster was okay probably one of the weaker ones i've done i've done the one at sandcastle which i really like uh, definitely go there if you're going to Pleasure Beach and if you well if you live close locally you could do it in just like a day or a morning you know, but if you are going to Pleasure Beach and live far away I recommend you like stay in a hotel or something and do that maybe on a separate day like in the morning if you're staying for like a night because you live hours away from Pleasure Beach not a problem for me I can do them as I wish but yeah uh, make sure you do Sandcastle in the winter by the way because it can get busy uh, but yeah, also the Alton Towers Water Park in Splash Landings has a Master Blaster as well that I really like. Uh, but yeah, uh, we also went to, well we didn't really go on the beach, but we just went somewhere else for lunch pretty much and did some crazy golf. That's all I really have to say, there was nothing to video for that today because I can't be filming in the water park, we can't have that because I know some people can get permission to film the slides with chest mounted GoPro but you know a water park due to the nature of it, it's not really somewhere that's welcome to filming obviously uh, but yeah that's all I really have to say I know I have waffled on a bit and I said I wouldn't this is why I'm not doing the in-depth review for Oak Oakwood now and I'm doing a more in-depth one when I get home and then I'll do an even more in-depth one in like a separate video I'll probably post in winter but yeah Tomorrow we're going to Folly Farm, not sure what I'm going to show you next, but you know, we'll just take it as it is and yeah. So it's now Friday and we finished our day at Folly Farm and today we have got the Wickerman t-shirt. I don't know how well that's picking up, I can't see very well because I'm in the car and it's really sunny and there's sun going through the window. And the icon hat and for this there wasn't really anything to vlog or whatever um i know there's old rides and stuff that i could have took the gopro on but i thought you know what, i'll just do a bit of a review for this one it's really good and i think a farm's not really the way to describe this place i'm sorry i've got loud music in the background but oh well just thought i do this quickly while my parents are gone and yeah we're gonna be heading home soon but yeah, it's more than just a farm, it's kind of a farm zoo and a fairground. I'm going to mainly talk about the fairground, as that's what I kind of spent most of my time in, obviously. It's just lots of really good old rides, they've got a sizzler in there, a carousel. You buy tokens, each token's like 50p, and most rides are one or two tokens, so really good value. We spent about £26 in there, kind of did all the... We did pretty much everything in re-rides. There's a ghost train in there as well. In terms of animals, you've got giraffes, you've got uh, camels, lions. Uh, you've got farm animals as well, like goats. We didn't spend much time looking at that as well. Uh, most of the fairgrounds inside, you've got a couple of rides outside, like a Ferris wheel, for example. Um, yeah, uh, but it's really good it's inside because it means that... Uh, even if it's raining, it's still really good and more UK theme, you, uh, more UK theme parks should be looking at stuff like that 
Uh, we also saw TPW there. We didn't go up to them today, but we did see them there. Um, they're they're in a, on a weekend in Wales with the European Coaster Club. I'm in the Roller Coaster Club of Great Britain, not the uh, European one. But uh, yeah, they're going to be spending time at Oatwood as well. Uh, so yeah, shout out to TPW. Uh, still a great channel as always. And yeah, that's all I really have to say. We're coming to the end of our holiday, uh, so we're going to be saying goodbye to Bury Court. That's where we've been staying. I know that sounds cringy, but yeah. Uh, we're going to be leaving there tomorrow and I'll finish the video off when I get home so the next shot you'll probably see will be when I get home and yeah Right, it's now Saturday and we're now back home after another just over four and a half hour drive uh, we're back home now and so yeah, as I promised previously I'm now going to just give a quick summary of the week as well as a more in-depth review of Oakwood because I didn't know that at the time so yeah, as you will um, know I mean, you've been watching this for about, I don't know how long the vlog is, so you've seen kind of this week in like probably 30 minutes or just over 30 minutes. I'm not sure how long this vlog is going to be yet. I'm going to have quite a bit of editing to do, maybe not as much as like the Europa Park vlog, but I'm guessing it's going to be like just over 30 minutes, but I'm not too sure yet. Uh, it just depends. Uh, but yeah, obviously we arrived there last week. Uh, Sunday we mainly spent time around the beach, which I showed you a couple of shots of. Monday we went to a different beach, I believe it was called Caswell Beach, so a couple of shots of that as well. Uh, so you saw a couple of shots of what we did there. I mean, not too much relevant to the channel. As you know, uh, this is primarily a theme park channel, so not everything that week was just relevant to um, theme parks as such. Uh, but I, obviously my vlog mainly focused on Oakwood, because that was the main reason I went to Wales. Uh, was to go to uh, Oakwood, but I kind of just decided to do this. I go on week holidays like this as well, and I usually go to a theme park at some point. So I just thought I'd vlog the entire week because uh, I wasn't sure how much I was going to vlog at Oakwood. I did do, I think, quite a bit of off ride and on ride footage. Uh, but yeah, I just decided to do this to just kind of see how it kind of went. And so I'll, obviously, I'll take into account you, you guys' feedback. Uh, so make sure you leave a comment below to give feedback on this uh, vlog to help me out. Uh, but yeah, anyway, on Tuesday we went to Swansea, as I said. Uh, I didn't vlog Tuesday at all, I don't think, from what I remember. Um, yeah, there wasn't that much to do there. We literally went round some shops and came back because, as you will know if I mentioned previously, we couldn't get in the water park because it was all like booked up and really busy. Um, yeah. I explained that previously, so I'm not going to repeat myself again, because that would just be pointless. But, yeah, you know what I mean if you've watched the vlog up to this point. Obviously, Wednesday was the big day. We went to Oakwood. And can I just say, as I said previously, I'm going to go into it in depth now. Um, it's a brilliant family park. It definitely brings back, has kind of a Camelot feel. And it even looks a bit like Camelot in some places, with a lot of open spaces, a lot of fields. It's literally in the middle of nowhere in some Welsh countryside, not too far from the coast, but still inland. Uh, like, we did hear some seagulls around, but you can't see the sea from Oakwood or anything. Uh, no matter what ride you're on, you can't see the sea. But, uh, yeah, I just thought, you know, having talked about E-bands at Blackpool Pleasure Beach and the new E-band system and the f positive feedback that I got from that. In fact, in my opinion, I know some of you watching this you all know that's probably one of my most successful vlogs in terms of the feedback I've actually got and where that's gone. You know who you are, but uh, yeah, uh, Oakwood system then. So you can buy like disabled tickets and with for each like disabled person you can get like carer tickets so carers go free. So uh, yeah, I'm going to put more information to the web onto the website so you can see. I'm going to put a link to the website, sorry. So you can see whether you're eligible for this. But if you are, definitely go for that because the carer tickets are free. So uh, you can save quite a bit of money doing that. So I think that's really good, you know, that Oakwood are doing that. And uh, then on to Oakwood Systems in the park for that. They do have uh, systems. Sorry, guys, just had to cut the footage there for a second. So, yeah, anyway, in terms of systems in the park itself, uh, if you have those tickets, uh, you can get a wristband. I don't know what the system's called ride access passes i don't know it's something like that 
the name doesn't matter very much though, I mean, it's more what it is, so yeah, it's a pretty good system, and it's very good that Oakwood ha has it, especially when then considering that they don't really get big queues at the parks at all, or the park, sorry, I'm going to explain in a second, so basically you get a wristband, and on certain rides, not all of them, um, the ones that they think they get the bigger queues, uh, you can get on at the exit, if you have a small queue, you can just jump from ride to ride like that. I mean, you're not saving a ton of time because the queues are small. You can also go in the main queues if you wish on those rides. No one's going to stop you from doing that. Uh, just whatever you prefer. I mean, if you, you're eligible to that system and you have it, you might as well use it no matter what. But, you know, no one's going to stop you. If, you. if the queue's there and it's short, you can join it. So, just do... Just do what you want with that, but as I said, it's not on all the rides. Some rides you will have to queue for, uh, but that's not a problem at all. It doesn't bother me because it, the rides don't really get queues at all. So any of you who struggle queuing or whatever, uh, it's not going to really be a problem. Or it shouldn't be a problem ever because uh, we were there on a busy day and most of the rides didn't have queues apart from Spooky 3D, which I'll talk about a bit more about in a second. Uh, yeah, in regards to rides with big queues, if a ride has big queue, I'm not sure how long it is exactly, um, they will give you a time, so a bit like Alton Towers, they'll give you a time for when you can next use the um, uh, pass, so you won't, so you'll have to just use normal queues or do whatever, you can't use it uh, before that time, uh, but yeah, they write it on a card, so yeah, that's very similar to Alton Towers if not identical really. It's kind of Pleasure Beach and Alton Towers kind of mixed together. To be honest, I'm really happy that I think it's a pretty good system and it's almost, I don't know really, it's like the rides barely get queued so it's really good that they have something like that in place and I mean it seems to be working so yeah I mean there's no Apart from Spooky 3D, which has an incredibly low throughput, uh, that's the park's dark ride, which you saw before. Uh, yeah, there weren't really, really any queues, so yeah, I think it's really good they have that. Now on to a, a bit about sort of filming on rides, because you'll have seen I filmed on rides, and I said at the start of the video, I think I said this, I'm gonna, that I was going to have to double check the policy on it. The policy with Oakwood is probably one of the... It's the best policy uh, surrounding that, that I've ever seen at a theme park. And that is that all you have to do, you must have a chest mounted action camera or GoPro and all you have to do is you go to like a reception area, it's near the park's gift shop. Uh, when you walk into Oakwood you walk for about five or so minutes or you can get the train to the main park. The entrance isn't like directly near the main ride, you do have to walk a bit. Uh, but it's only a five minute walk so yeah the trains are for every 15 minutes so uh, most of you should be able to walk that so just do it don't bother waiting for the train i know it's quite a nice way to get into the park but yeah uh, there's a reception area in like a conservatory bit if you ask one of the members of the staff they'll be able to direct you uh, the staff are very friendly at this park that's another thing to mention uh, all staff were very friendly and happy to help um, with any questions etc uh, so yeah it had a very nice feel to the park because of that. Obviously, it isn't an amusement park, but an amusement park with a nice feel is fine by me. It doesn't always have... Parks don't always have to have theming. I mean, theming's obviously great, but you can still have a great day out at an amusement park with a nice feel. Uh, and that's what Oakwood is. And it's got some brilliant rides for that, as I'm going for a, go on to in a second. But, yeah. I'm waffling on now, so yeah, I better carry on. Uh, so you go to the reception, and basically they'll check your GoPro for you. Just say like, I'm wanting to film on rides using this, and then obviously have your GoPro at the ready with the chest mounts, and then just ask them to check it for you. They'll check it, all being well, they'll sign a slip uh, saying that uh, basically that gives you permission to film on the rides. Uh, just give that to the ride staff when you go on the rides uh, with your chest mount at your GoPro. Uh, the rules are with that, obviously, you must keep it on the chest mount at all times to so that it's like safe and secure. Um, 
And yeah, make sure you do do that because the Rise staff are looking out for it. Like every single member of Rise staff, uh, if they didn't see we had the card or whatever straight away, they did ask us for it. I mean, obviously we had it, so it was all good. Uh, but yeah, make sure you have that because it's not like one of those things where they just, well, they'll just like let it pass. They will ask you for it. So yeah, please don't try filming without permission or anything because it's something they really do keep an eye on at this park. But I wish more parks like the, the Merlin Parks and Blackpool Pleasure Beach would do that because I think that's the best way around it because it allows people to film on rides and sort of do what I do, advertise the parks, post the videos to YouTube, just spread the word about a park which, you know, helps bring in more visitors which Oakwood definitely deserves uh, because it's a really good park and there weren't many queues but yeah. Uh, but it also makes sure that everything's done safe and securely and that there's no risk to, obviously, any staff or the general public with uh, any like cameras flying about and stuff or not being secure and flying off rides. Because uh, obviously that can be very dangerous, which I completely understand. But Oakwood's approach, I don't get why more parks don't just do this because it's perfectly, you know, it makes total sense. I'll be answering some more about the rides. As I mentioned previously, my favourite rides are Megaphobia and Speed. Megaphobia is my second favourite Woody in the country, and Speed is a great coaster. And definitely, I'd say, in the top ten in the country. Uh, it didn't ride as well on some of the other seats. Uh, obviously, the first time I rode it, which you saw in the GoPro, was on front row on the one of the middle seats. Uh, the third seat as you walk on the train. Um, but on some of the other seats it didn't ride quite as well so for that reason I don't think it would be above number 5 in my top 10 rides in the UK uh, but yeah it was a brilliant ride as I said and one of the best rides in the UK but still I rides such as like Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach and Nemesis at Alton Towers are far superior and Wicker Man as well they're all far superior to Speed but still Speed is a great ride at Oakwood and it's great that a family park like that has something of that quality uh, which also applies to Megaphobia which was a brilliant coaster as well and I'm sure that is also in my top 10. I'm not exactly sure where either of those rides would be but I'm pretty sure they'll be in my top 10 in the UK both of them. Uh, but yeah some of the other rides, Treetops Coaster is a great family coaster. Um, the Creepy Corolla Roller Coaster was, oh, it's a Pimfari isn't it so it's a bit rough, wasn't a big fan of that. Uh, Spooky 3D was the Parks and the Dark ride. It's great that they have that, but the ride is it's very low capacity, uh, which I, was a bit of a problem, because uh, it meant the queue was obviously a lot longer than it could have been. And that's the one where we had to get the time on as well. Uh, but yeah, very low capacity. The queue moved at a snail's pace, not even that. So yeah, they definitely... I mean, operations apart from that, they were okay. They could be a bit faster, but the rides... As I said before, none of the rides really got massive queues apart. I mean, Spooky Freebie got a bit of a queue, but still. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think they need to do too much about the operations. There's, they're not amazing, but, you know, they keep the queues at a minimum. So, you know, if they're keeping the queues at a minimum, what's the issue, really? Uh, speaking of that, uh, some staff which I thought was good... You, you know, they were quite reassuring, the members of staff. Um, most of them, kind of, the safety announcements were done by the staff on microphones. And what I did like is, like, how on Megaphobia and stuff like that, they went the extra mile, like, say, Megaphobia wasn't on two trains, which means that the first train, because uh, of how the ride runs, sometimes the second train's not always got back to the station when the first train's on the lift. It happened every time towards, which means that, and there's basically automatic safety systems on place on rides so that in case the train doesn't make it to the station there's no like collision so obviously uh, if the train's not in the station and the train reaches the top of the lift or the lift or the train stops and every time we went on megaphobia uh, the ride operators were warning people about that that you may stop for a couple of seconds on the lift hill which i thought was a really nice thing i've never seen a park do that before but you know, it's only a small thing, but it reassures people because, you know, it can be for members of the general public who don't know how these rides work, stopping on the lift hill could be a bit of a, you know, stressful experience, even if it's for a couple of second, seconds, you know. So, 
you know, but the ride operators were warning about stuff. And I mean, it was only really on megaphobia, but yeah, like stuff that's basically saying that, you know, it's normal, it's on two trains, so it might happen. They didn't go into as much detail as I just said then, but they just said because it's on two trains, you may stop on the lift hill for a couple of seconds, but that's fine. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was really nice of the staff to do that. And then on some other rides, they're just like, if it stops, we'll come and get you or whatever. Uh, but yeah, uh, they were very good at reassuring uh, the members of uh, or guests about stuff like that. So I thought that was really good. On to a couple of other rides then. Uh, we did all the coaster credits apart from the Crocodile Coaster because Camelot used to be my local park before it shut down. Now it's technically back for Pleasure Beach. So I already got that cred, so I didn't bother doing it again. Uh, we pretty much did everything really. I've talked about a lot of the major rides now. There was some dinghy slides which was good. You'll see in the GoPro footage we spun at the bottom of... I forgot that, what that ride's called, but we spun off at the bottom of... Uh, they've got some open slides and stuff at Oakwood. They've also got a waterfall ride. We didn't do that. Uh, but yeah, there's another attraction with some open slides and some enclosed slides. And... Yeah, we spun out at the bottom, so I'm not sure why that happened, but yeah. I know I'm getting a bit wishy-washy now, but to summarise, it was a really good part. We did everything apart from pretty much Waterfall. We didn't do Bobsleigh, uh, but that's not technically classed as a coaster credit, so I wasn't too bothered about that. Drenched and Vertigo. Uh, drenched, I didn't fancy getting that drenched. Uh -huh. And Vertigo, yeah, that thing looks pretty horrific, as I, you will have seen or heard my reactions to in the vlog uh, but yeah all I really have to say about Oakwood and that doesn't leave me with much left to say to be honest I mean Thursday we went to the water park as I said before uh, we got to town I've already talked about the water park I thought it was really good and then Friday we went uh, to Folly Farm and yeah, I've already talked about Folly Farm as well. I did a review of that back at the uh, back at the accommodation. I know I didn't really vlog from it, but you know, I just thought I'd do a quick review of that. I mean, I could have vlogged a bit, but the what? I mean, it was just old rise to be honest. I mean, the rest of Folly Farm isn't too relevant to the channel, so I just thought that with it being what it is, and it was actually bigger. Well, not bigger, I'm not sure it was bigger, but busier than Oakwood, which was interesting, but, yeah. And then today we came home, so that's all I really have to say for uh, this video. I'm not sure where the next vlog is going to be from, I'm not really sure yet. Uh, but, uh, finally, I'd just like to say, make sure you subscribe, like, and uh, comment your feedback, as I said. Uh, subscribe when that next vlog comes out. Uh, make sure you go and check out Oakwood's website in the description as well as the Theme Park Mad YouTube channel as I mentioned at the start of the video. Uh, speaking of that, I'm hoping to do a collab with Theme Park Mad eventually. I know this is like the third time in this video I've referenced them now, but you know, I give credit when credit's due. Uh, but yeah, make sure you go and subscribe to them as well and check out some of their videos. I'm not sure whether the next vlog will be this collab. It depends how quickly this kind of collab comes together and we plan it out and stuff. But I'm hoping maybe at Blackpool Pleasure Beach or somewhere like that. Uh, I will be going back to Blackpool Pleasure Beach soon. I'm not sure if I'm going to vlog, but if that is for a collab with Theme Park Mad, I will vlog that day because that's going to be really a really good vlog to do and quite funny. And it might actually be interesting for once. I know I'm dissing my own vlogs now, but oh well. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to leave feedback and yeah, I'll see you next time.